was shocked to get my issue of this magazine, which showed a picture of my office on the cover. Reason Magazine did this for every subscriber to show how easy it is today for cameras to invade our privacy. Cameras on Earth are even more intrusive. They're everywhere now. White male subject in the distance suit is exiting the vehicle. Here, Wilmington, Delaware officials were proud to show me how they can spy on me and others in their town. They say it's reduced crime, but it's also reduced our privacy. Thanks to YouTube and a dozen other websites, the images spread, invading your privacy further. CNN anchor Kira Phillips went to the bathroom during a presidential speech, forgetting that she still had her microphone on. So mixed with the president's words, viewers learned what she really thought about her brother and his wife. Sure, oh, if a yeah. comes, He's married, three kids, and his wife is just a control freak. Her family might never have known about it because CNN's audience is relatively small. But because today people quickly post such things on the web, now her mistake has been viewed by nearly a million people. Enough for her to go and let her make fun of herself. Number four. Like you've never gone to the bathroom and had it broadcast on national television? And on the web, the mistake will live on permanently. So might yours if you, say, sing to yourself badly. Your little cousin may put it on YouTube. Is it your party? Maybe. Count the camera right now. And your mistake, whatever it is, will be easily searchable. Type in nose picking and there are 46 pages of videos. And almost as many on singing in the shower. Was this you taking the policeman sobriety test? Sorry, this is no longer just between you and the police officer. Your privacy is basically blown. That's why the media runs scare stories warning of Big Brother and web attacks. And Alexi Vayner wants to warn you about another risk. The Yale student applied for Wall Street jobs by sending out this video with his resume. To achieve success, you must first conceive it and believe in it. He thought video of his achievements would make his resume stand out from the pack. Did you think that this could get out and be embarrassing? Never never in a lifetime. But his seven-minute video included boastful statements. Failure cannot be considered an option. It showed him lifting heavy weights, doing Olympic-level skiing, though he later admitted this might not be he. He appears to karate chop a stack of bricks. Remember, impossible ah! is nothing. And he shows himself dancing. If you're going to dance, then dance, but do it with passion. sent the video to half a dozen banks, and someone at one of them gave it and his personal information to someone who put it on the web. Within days, he started getting emails about it. What I see is these huge chains of messages have been forwarded. Today, a million people may have seen it. Call it a lesson in how not to get a job. He's mocked on news programs. Self-serving, egotistical. I have to change telephone numbers. I have to get new email addresses. I have to change bank accounts. He complained to YouTube, which promptly removed his video. But then someone else posted it, again and again. Now people are posting video spoofs of his resume. <laughs> Alexi says this has wrecked his life. All of my private information is on the internet. I receive hundreds of harassing messages. People at your school for Halloween dress up as you. Yeah, and people will call you a douchebag, a liar. They want to beat you. They want to deport you. They want to throw you out of school. Do you think Wall Street is closed to you now? I think so. Is it possible that all this publicity will turn out to be good? So far, it's been like going through hell. If every one of the resumes or cover letters we've ever written in our lives to employers could suddenly come back and haunt us, that would be scary. There's all this hand-wringing about my privacy's blown. Nah, chicken littles. Professor Jeff Jarvis points out that most of what's on the web, people put up voluntarily. The new attitude is privacy? Who needs that? The truth is on the internet, if you don't reveal some of yourself, you won't find friends. Facebook and, and MySpace and all these companies are being built on the notion that you can find friends because you find people who are like you. And you establish that friendship by telling them stories about yourself. But the stories the kids tell often show themselves doing dangerous things, illegal things. Don't they worry that this will get them into trouble? Young people just have a very, very different view of privacy than people in my generation. When I was a kid, diaries were still sold with locks on them. Now, more likely, a kid is putting a diary up on MySpace or on their own website or blog and running to school every day bragging, you know, I got 20 hits on my diary. When it comes to emotions, 
why be private about that kind of thing? Stephanie Klein has made lots of friends by blogging about her life. Blogging means writing an Internet column. She writes and writes about everything, showing herself as a single woman, partying, dressing up in the bedroom. You talk about a lot of things others consider private. Abortion, miscarriage, your personal sexual experiences. It takes a lot for me to get embarrassed about anything. And that may be why her blog gets about 300,000 hits a month. I get so much back from people, from total strangers, saying, you really helped me because you wrote about how pissed off you were. You made me realize that my relationship's normal, too. So that's why I put myself out there. And what about privacy? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I think in 20 years, everybody is going to have such an Internet rap sheet of one thing or another that nobody is going to be able to cop too much attitude. You have the power to tell that story in your own words. You're never afraid, oh, God, what if someone finds this out? Because you've already put it out there. Still, she does get hate mail. Some say she reveals too much. I've received emails wishing that I get cancer and that I don't find it until it's too late. There are schmucks in the world. Yes, there are people who can do bad things. That's always been the case. Maybe they have a few more ways to do bad things now, but I think we shouldn't judge the internet based on a few bad things that happen. That was most people's opinions about the web and the omnipresent camera. Light not, say many experts. But this guy's humiliated everywhere. True. So what do you propose we do about this? Should we shut down the internet? Well, of course not. The street has bad things going on it, but we still venture out on the street. Stephanie's glad she did. Her intimate blog attracted the attention of Phil. And nine months later, they got engaged. It was the most amazing thing to meet my husband through my blog. He saw what I did. He saw who I am. And he still wanted to be with me. So that was like the best. And as her blog will tell you in detail, she got pregnant and this month gave birth to twins. What were you doing there? Just four days later, she was blogging again. I promised many more photos in the coming days. Is there such a thing as too much information? Probably, though not for me. I mean, I pretty much share it all. And despite all those warnings that the Internet will strip away your privacy, remember that it also knits the world together. Aww.